evening everybody i'll begin in another minute or so i'll give some more persons to join the class give the, some more give them some more time to join the class because there is a much bigger class All right, evening, everybody. <coughs> Just respond so I know that you're hearing me. Evening. 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 Okay. How are we doing today? Okay. We're good? Okay. Uh, can somebody remind me what we did in the last class? What are some of the things we discussed in the last class? Don't all rush to answer me, so I'm listening. So we talk about the marketing management philosophies. And remind us what, what, what those include again? The, uh, when we talked about the production concept, product concept, selling concept, the marketing concept, and also the society. Society. Societal. Uh, societal. Societal, yes. As also the four, the four P's in marketing. And what are the four P's again? Price, product, promotion, and place. Right, there you go. <clears throat> Somebody's ready for their quiz on Monday. Oh, yes, you're going to do a quiz at the end of this lecture, um, lecture two. So pay attention. Uh, okay, <clears throat> so so you're correct. Um, who was talking? Just remind me of the name. Murphy. All right, thanks very much, Ms. Murphy. So I'm just going to go through the slides. Just as a reminder, so these are some of the things we talked about. As Ms. Murphy says, we looked at the definition of marketing and we talked about um, um, building profitable relationships. We looked at the customer um, value chain and the four, five core concepts. We talked about needs, wants, and demands, and we kind of went through all of that. Customer satisfaction and all of that. Then we looked at uh marketing management blah, blah 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 oh yes we talked about value proposition and i think i'd ask you actually to um choose a video that um talks about or speak to the whole notion of the benefits of 
the product or service. Then we went through the marketing management philosophies and what they mean. And as, as was said by Ms. Murphy, the four Ps, we spoke about that. Uh, just kind of reminding persons of the last lecture, what we covered. So these are some of the things that we covered in that. No, I don't know that we finished this actual. I think this is somewhere here we stopped. Let's do right. <clears throat> yes, this is why, because I, I, if I remember correctly, we're not finished with this lecture. Where am I? Why did I? I went all the way. Right here. Right, customer relationship management. I think that's where we stopped. So I'm going to pick up from here and then we go into the second lecture. So, one, we, we're looking at, and I think I did say this that it's better to target fewer but more profitable customers. And I gave you the example of the wholesale not wanting to have, you know, a million customers, but wanting five customers who are going to spend a lot of money and their repeat um, customers, building two-way two -way relationships through digital. And let me just add through digital technology and attracting rather than intruding upon the market, meaning that the different segments in the marketplace. And we talked about trends, so consumer-generated marketing, partner relationship marketing, and in other words, you Part of what is happening now, especially with um, with companies now, is that they are they are they are kind of including their customers as a part of their own marketing and branding. So this is an example where it says that when HS Heinz invited cons consumers to submit homemade ads for its ketchup brand on YouTube, it received more than eight hundred entries. Some very good, but most only so so are even downright dreadful. In other words, the consumers felt a part of the brand. Um, value from customers in terms of purchases and value to customers in, in the benefit offered. So it is a, so there's a, there's, a, there's a mutual value being created. The value for the, for the, for the, for the, for the, um, for the manufacturer, for the company or for the brand and the value for the consumer in terms of the benefits they get from that. And you want satisfied, loyal customers who will buy more or will continue to buy. And you create customer, customer loyalty and retention, share of market, share of customer and customer equity. And it's very, very important to understand that. And I think I made, made mention in the last class that is actually, it's cheaper to, retain a customer than to get a new one. And somebody actually explained that, you know, it will take time and effort and, 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 and money to convince a new customer versus someone who's already acquainted with the brand. So customer relationship management is very, very important. And this is why you have many companies that even have customer complaints, um, forms that people have to fill out because they want to know that their customers um, wants and needs and their queries and their problems are being addressed in a timely and, 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 and I would add profitable way. So customer lifetime value, the value, the value of the entire stream of purchases that the customer would make over a lifetime of patronage. I wonder if you understand this in terms of customer lifetime value. What they're really saying in terms of this is that you, you're, you are thinking about all the purchases that this one customer would make over his or her lifetime. And if this, is a, if this is a very good customer, then of course, the customer, um, the lifetime value actually goes up because it means that this person is going to continuously come back and make a purchase. All right. <clears throat> Some of these things you're going to read on your own. I, I'm not going to necessarily go into this. Customer relationship groups. Um, I don't know that you necessarily need to get into this. Right, so this is part of what we are going to focus on. And even when you go on um, trends, and we're talking about trends in the marketing um, landscape, part of what is happening now is that companies have to move with a trend. For example, 
sustainable marketing. And, and I don't like this notion that they reduce sustainable marketing to corporate social responsibility because it's much more than that. Sustainable, sustainable marketing, for example, as one of the latest trends in, in, in marketing, is the whole notion that brands are conscious of the environment, they're conscious of um, issues of equality and equity. They're conscious about issues of systemic racism. They're conscious about issues relating to gender-based violence. So I don't like this whole notion of just reducing it to corporate social responsibility because sustainable marketing is much more than that. Rapid globalization, you know, we're, when we talk about globalization, we're talking about transnationalization. We're talking about removing political, economic, social, and even cultural barriers where the world is becoming as one, a single social space. In other words, we're now becoming, or we're now global citizens. We're not just Jamaicans, but we're global citizens. And some years ago, and I think I learned this when I was at UA, that there are, I don't know what the actual number is, but at the time, there, are, there were 6 million Jamaicans in the world, but only 2.7 lived in Jamaica. In other words, Jamaicans are all over the world. And this is why, and this is partly, this is due in part to globalization where countries such as Canada are encouraging qualified Jamaicans to come there and live. Not-for-profit marketing, you see that a lot happening, especially with non-governmental organizations are not-for-profit um, organizations. Can you think of a not-for-profit organization? Can you think of any not-for-profit organization? Red Cross. The Red Cross, yes. So they have Salvation been- Salvation Army. Salvation Army. So in the case of Red Cross, they might, be, they might do a, 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 a blood drive. In other words, they want persons to donate blood. So they have to put out a marketing campaign to convince persons to do that. Um, on the uncertain economic environment, this too, and you can think about the pandemic now. The pandemic has brought about a lot of uncertainty in the, in the economic environment. This is partly why I'm still in Jamaica because I say, you know what, I can go and earn a little money in Jamaica than in Canada where they're just opening up the, the businesses. Although I still, I, I have a job, but it's a $15 per hour job, which is ridiculous an insult to my qualification and my intelligence. So I said, you know what, let me just come home and relax for a few and then go back. Um, advancing digitized communication, social media, online mobile, and all of that is changing um, where marketing takes place and how marketing takes place. Right now, as a marketer myself, I have to be reaching um, one of my segments I go after are high school graduates, and I know that they're on their phones and they're on, they go to certain websites. And I'll say this, but it's, uh, it's a kind of tongue in cheek. One of the top rated websites in Jamaica is Pornhub. Pornhub is one of the top rated high, um, websites in Jamaica. So if one of your high, if one of your segments include men, you would have to be advertising on Pornhub. We don't do it at Excelsior because of course we're a Methodist institution and it seems a little bit unethical and immoral to be trying to reach persons there. But we know that teenagers, especially teenage boys, and especially grown men, adult males, they will go to these websites to um, help themselves or to, to get ideas about how to carry out certain um, activities. So you find that digitization, digitalization, they are really changing how marketing is done. And this is something that we're going to come back to in the, I don't necessarily want to review the concepts now because we are, I want to ensure that we don't lose time in terms of looking at the other areas. So, but let's go through this. How would you define marketing? What, how would you define marketing? What would be your definition of marketing? Creating value for customers and building strong relationships to capture value for customers in return. Thank you. Perfect. I love that definition. What about the marketing process? How would you define the marketing process? If Google fast people, you can Google. Yes. Um, sir, sir. Um, understand the marketplace and customer needs and wants. So the, so the marketing process is 
Say that again for me. Sir, understand the marketplace and customer needs. All right. So, so process me involves what? Steps, right? Yes, so that would be the first one. So a series of steps that allow a brand or a company to identify customer problems and, of course, create value for customers and take advantage of opportunities that exist in the marketplace. All right. Understand customers and identify five core marketing marketplace concepts. What are the five core mar marketplace concepts? Um, so customer needs, want, and demand. Mm -hmm. Market offering. And customer value and satisfaction. Mm -hmm. Same relationship and market. All right. Yes. Somebody is working with Google. Um, identify elements of a customer driven oh. um, marketing strategy and discuss the marketing management orientations that guide the strategy. Doctor. It's number three. Are you not seeing my screen? Yes, sir. Yes. So this is really speaking to the whole notion of the, the kinds of philosophies that guide um, marketing, whether it be um, the societal approach or the sales approach or whatever it is. All right. And we just spoke about the different trends that exist and forces that are changing, which is really what we're going to get into now in the new lec in the, in lecture two. This is really what we're going to discuss now. All right, so please pay attention to this one because you're going to get a quiz on it, all right? A graded quiz. Very easy, once you're paying attention. Why this thing not? And show, please, thank you. So lecture two, let me just get my, get to the lecture, lecture two. Uh, let me share screen. Slideshow, all right. Analyzing the marketing environment. So the learning objectives, one, describe the environmental forces that affect the com um, a company's ability to serve its customers. Explain how changes in the in demo in demography and economy and economic environment and how this may affect marketing decisions. Identify the major trends in the firms. I don't like the word the in a firm's natural and technological environments, and explain the key changes in political and cultural environments. Discuss how companies can react to the marketing environments. We're going to get into a lot of those discussions. I think I had, hold on, it's not there, I have my little video, no, okay, I actually wanted to show you a video. All right, so the marketing environment. So when we're talking about the marketing environment, we're actually talking about factors that affect um, marketing efforts. So factors and outside marketing that affect marketing management's ability to build and maintain successful, successful relationships with target customers. So anything that can affect the relationship between a brand and its customers, especially a profitable relationship, is something that affects the marketing environment. And that is something, some of the things that we're going to um, discuss. Some of them you can see, some of them you cannot see. For example, many marketers would not have predicted uh, a pandemic of this nature. And many businesses have actually crumbled and other um, brands have struggled to kind of position themselves or reposition themselves in the marketplace. All right. And also too, there are some companies that they go south or they, they are, they, they, are um, they fold because they are not keeping up with the times. Can you think of a company that really went south because it was not paying attention to what was happening in the marketplace or the changes that were happening in the marketplace. McDonald's. McDonald's? They're not susceptible to change. Okay. Um, why, what, what specific example? You're talking about McDonald's in Jamaica? Yes, I did sir. not answer that. Yes, um, for the person who did, Somebody said, yes, sir, go ahead. Just tell us a little bit, just a little bit Yes, more. sir, because McDonald's um, compared to Burger King, 
burgers, McDonald's cater to the kids. Burger King cater for kids and adults. So if it is that the family wants to go to um to get a meal, they would have to take the kids to McDonald's to get the smaller burger and then they would have to go to Burger King. As opposed to the family can go to Burger King, get the smaller size burger for the child and also one for the bigger size for themselves. Mm -hmm. Yes, agreed. Agreed. But they are still, no, but the thing is, you know, you can't blame them for that, you know, because in other words, they cater to a specific segment in the marketplace, which is called niche marketing. They cater to kids. Nothing is wrong with that because there are some brands or companies that cater to kids. I'm more thinking of a company that used to exist, but that no longer exists because it was not paying attention to the kinds of changes that were, that exist in the marketplace. Oh, whether, it be okay. local, whether it be local or international, can you think of any such company? That used to exist that no longer exists because it partly in part because it was not paying attention to what was happening. Anybody can think of any example? No examples. But does Clara still exist? It just doesn't exist in Jamaica. Sorry, can it be like a supplier, like, let's say, because uh, due to the pandemic, mm -hmm. you have suppliers like farmers mm -hmm. who normally supply hotels and um, schools with vegetables and so forth. But because of the pandemic, it, they still, they, it's like a reduction in the amount of persons coming in at the hotel so they don't necessarily take much goods from them any, yeah, anymore. But they still exist though. But they still oh, exist right. though. Mm. So even though they don't, they're not doing as much business, business as before, they still exist. Can't think of any company that used to exist or any brand that used to exist that no longer exists because it refused to pay attention to what was happening in the marketplace. No. Sir, I can't wrap my head around any of those. Okay. Um, so I'm hearing two of our very vocal um, students. Can we, what are about some, what, anything from the other persons in the, in the class? Yeah, I think both of them. All right, so here's an example. It says, environmental unf unforeseeables have dealt Sony some heavy blows, but the company's inability to adapt to the changing technological environment has turned Sony's make-believe brand promise into more of a make-believe one. There, and, uh, have you ever heard about Kodak? Yes. Yes, sir. What Kodak used to do? Camera and them something they said. Right, and I, I'm almost sure... If I remember correctly, let me just check Kodak. The reason Kodak, there are so many of them, Kodak no longer available. All right, let's see this. These people are showing me stupid ass. Um, they're showing me an artist, can you imagine? Let me put in another word. You're showing me an artist. Yes, so you have an artist by the name of Kodak. Something like I, did. I even know somebody named. But Kodak is a perfect example of that, though. They were not paying attention. There are several changes that were happening, and they it's like they ignored, even when their persons were saying to them, you know, pay attention to what is happening. One of the things that you have to do as a brand or as a marketer as a marketing officer, is pay attention to what is happening in your industry. So I, for example, I read a lot about higher education and marketing. I pay attention. My principal pays attention too. Um, I, I, that's, the, that's one of the beauties I, 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 um, we have at Excelsior, that my principal is always kept, is always in the know in terms of the changing landscape of tertiary education. This is partly why we are now offering master's degrees, because... High schools are not offering the students CAPE associate degrees. 
So we say, okay, we offer associate degrees and the high schools are offering associate degrees. It means that slowly that market is dying. So we need to create a different market. So we say, okay, we're going to offer uh, associate degrees. All right, so it is important that as marketers, you pay attention to factors um, inside and outside that can affect your, um, your profitable relationships with your customers. Very, very critical. So, and there are two types of factors. The micro, the micro factors are the micro environment and the macro factors. So micro means um, forces with direct impact and macro means external forces with direct impact. All right, a macro could be a pandemic. A macro could be a, a technological um, development that has shifted how, for example, think about how people now consume music. We no longer use Walkman. Anybody used to have a Walkman or we're not so old? Right, even cassettes. Uh, MP3. An MP3 yeah. and uh, those things no longer exist. So you have to be constantly paying attention to the market. And if you notice too, even how artists themselves know, um, how they know, package themselves, they sometimes are not interested in making albums. If you notice at Beyonce, Beyonce doesn't really make albums, you know, she makes a kind of, well, she makes video albums. Because she knows that nobody's really going to buy a, a physical CD. Well, I don't even know if physical CD exists anymore. Physical nope, CD is stream live. Everybody's sort of streaming and it, it exists, but mostly um, EP and streaming and them something this Right, oh, right, you right. I have a story in um, a Springs Plaza. At, um, uh, what is what is the name? The, I, I know that story that you're talking about, but the interesting thing is for them to show you their sales of physical CDs. The yes, exists. and they are not keeping up with the time. Like, they're nobody not. Not really go by still, cause but you know they are there. But even in the even when you go to North America, whether it be the United States Eric, or, Ariat, or Canada, when you go into like Walmart, you see physical CDs. Nobody's buying them. People just walk past them. Nobody wants a physical CD because they can just go on YouTube and get your music, because the environment of music consumption has changed. The consumer behavior has changed. So actors in the micro environment, and when we say micro, we're talking about small, the company, the suppliers, marketing intermediaries, competitors, publics, and, and customers. We have to be paying attention to the company, what is happening inside of the company. We have to pay attention to who our suppliers are. Are they reliable? Are they, cost, uh, are they charging us too much? Is it that we need to change the suppliers? Is it that there are suppliers who can do um, deliver quicker or give us at a, a reduced cost, things like that, so that we don't have to pass on any additional cost to the customer. We have marketing intermediaries. Is it that, for example, we're going to use a company to do our marketing for us, or we're going to keep everything in-house? We have competitors. Are we paying attention to our competitors? One thing I do, as a person in charge of marketing and communication, I like everything for UE, UTEC, UCC, Portmore Community College, Mobic. I follow everything they do. Sometimes, like the other day, I sign up for UE to go and do their master's program because we're going to do a virtual session. So I want to see exactly how they do their session and ensure that we're doing it better. I go to all the UCC's functions, especially when they're That's having their- In other words, it means that you're spying on your competitors to see how best you can outrun them. Of course, that's what you have to do. That's what you have to do. And actually, some companies, especially when you're in the, like I call it the gadget industry, what your competitors do, they buy your phone or whatever, and they, they, um, they, 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 they take it apart to see exactly what you, how you actually, what is included in it and all of that, and to see how best they can um, outdo you. Do you remember Periscope? When people were like cooking and everybody was showing that they're cooking and all of that. Don't tell me you don't remember it's Periscope, you know, it's, and I just the other day, Periscope is not that long ago. And then Facebook came up with Facebook Live. Facebook just came up with Facebook Live and Periscope died. It just dropped both we dead. I don't know Periscope, sir. You don't know Periscope. I, I hope I'm using the right term, but I think it was called Periscope. Um, think about when, when Facebook realized that Instagram was a competitor, what did Facebook do with Instagram? They merged, they merged them. I think. Then they merged them, they buy them out. They bought yeah, Instagram. And they buy out WhatsApp as and they well. And they bought WhatsApp, exactly. 
that's what you do because you have to be paying attention to what is happening in the marketplace. Instagram was a serious competitor to Facebook. So Facebook said, here what? Either we're going to come, either we are going to try to outdo them or we are going to buy them. And remember, Instagram attracts a, what I would call Generation Z, which is partly some of what we're going to get into. A younger demographic, and Facebook wants to retain those persons because the younger demographic are also influencers. They influence, they influence, sorry, consumer behavior. What people, sometimes what people eat, sometimes what they do in terms of whether they live a healthy lifestyle or not, you know, the kinds of movies they watch, you know, how they communicate, where they communicate. So Facebook wanted to get that, ensure that um, they were in the mix. Yes. Could this be a, a suitable example as well? Like the plans Digicel and Flow offer, mm -hmm. right? To put for your phone a month time because um, Flow, to put it on for the month, I think it was $1,700. It raised by well, probably 2000 children now, but not by much. But Digicel, a $4,000 for the month, $4,900 for must be 30 days and so. And basically, Flow offer the same thing like what Digicel offer, but for cheaper, a cheaper cost. So you find, say, more people run to Flow than Digicel when it comes to the plan and thing for the month. Yes, and so, that's a perfect, and that's a that's a perfect example. That's a very so very good example. Is, every minute, then change up one different plan and say, all right, then. So Mister Digicel come out with one one week something. Right, and they might offer all sorts of something. Says so like they might watch out whatever the two of them might do to say, mm -hmm. all right, then draw the customer. Right, right, because you have to be paying attention to your competitor. So there's this tug of war between Flow and Digital. I I don't like Flow. I'll just as a disclaimer, I hate Flow, um, because they were they were criminals back in the day when it was just them alone, and they charge us fifty dollars per hour for a simple phone call, which was ridiculous. But they are the perfect example of you paying attention to your competitor. You have to pay attention to your competitor. When it talks about public snow, it's talking about the persons that you're serving. Who are you serving? Who are your customers? Uh, well, public snow. Uh, how do you look at public snow? Public, public, public. Public can be your stakeholders, whether the stakeholders are internal or they are external. Um, so it could be like customers, it could be influencers, it could be the kinds of persons you hire, things like that. And of course, you have to pay attention to your customers. And when we talk about customers, we're not just talking about the person who just comes and buys. We're talking about whether they are not, you consider them to be loyal customers, um, whether you consider, you consider them to be, um, we would call them ambassadors, whether they are ambassadors of your brand. So there are different ways of how you look at customers. And then also to you're looking at customers that are highly profitable versus those who are not so profitable. All right. So marketing intermediaries, we're talking about resellers, physical distribution firms, marketing service um, agencies. I think I spoke about that, You're right? So here are some of the examples of publics, financial publics, media publics, government publics, citizen action publics, legal publics, general public. And these, of course, affect the, it can affect your marketing. For example, government publics, how they can affect your marketing? Because they, they, they are going to what, put out laws and regulations that you can, you have to abide by. So certain things they might consider to be illegal. A perfect example now, and Digicel is going, to, um, is going to get itself into some trouble in the future when some Jamaican sues. You, have you ever received a text message from Digicel like from High Low or one of the gas, the, the, the cylinder company or NWC or one of these companies? You wonder, they, how get your number. you wonder how the hell they get my number? I don't want these people to be texting me because it is a breach of privacy. It is a breach of your constitutional right to privacy. In European countries and even in North America, you have to sign. The customer has to actually subscribe before you can send them anything. What, what I know happens in Canada, what they do, because they can't text your phone, what they now do, especially some of the marketing firms, they market to you by way of um, area code. So they put the error code in social, like, for example, on Facebook. And if you live in a particular area code, then you'll see the ads. 
or if you subscribe, they're going to send you a whole heap of text messages. Once you subscribe, and then, then you can unsubscribe if you and don't then, like it. Exactly. But and then if you send us a send this up with them to your phone. So right. You like it. it is because nobody has really brought them to court why it continues. But in other parts of the world, because people can um went to court, they, they actually change the system. So they can so affect. So like, you go go court though, me now. <laughs> no, me now go court, you know, because me a marketer, so me, me kind of understand why they do certain things. But sometimes it's quite annoying. It is really, really annoying. All right. So in terms of the macro changes now, or the macro forces that can bring about change or affect your marketing environment, demographic changes. And demographic changes, we are talking about, about population growth or the lack thereof. So if, you, if you're marketing in Canada, you need to be very mindful of your demography. Why? Because it's a multicultural society. So you have Caribbean people, and among Caribbean people, you have different types. Then you have Asian, then you have um, Indians, then you have you know, all different types of demography. You have white people, you have Aboriginal people. So you have to bear in mind those different ethnicities and races when you're marketing. And you have to be careful too. For example, when I always say to the, 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 the content developer, even today I was talking to her in Canada, whenever you're going to market anything in Canada, ensure that the image you use is multicultural. You cannot put all Caucasian people and want um, Indians or black people to come and do the program. Once we see somebody white on the, on the ad, say, enough for me. I usually shut it out. So I always say to her, ensure that you take into consideration the, 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 the nature of the, of the makeup of the population. If it is a multicultural society, be careful. Notice even in Jamaican ads, we see most black people, right? Most of the ads are black or it has different shades of people. You hardly see white people in Jamaican ads because Jamaica is over 90% um, black. And you know, people will complain, why are you selling me a product when all I'm seeing are white people? when the country is black. Um, economic forces, you know, we're talking about um, access to capital. Um, we're talking about income per capita. We're talking about GDP growth development, uh, gross domestic um, product, the, num the, the amount of goods and services that are produced in a, in a country, whether or not people have the spending power or the buying power to make a purchase for this particular product. We're talking about natural forces. Are you in a country where it is prone to natural disasters? Some international businesses will not go into a country if they are affected by, constantly affected by natural disasters. And there is, let me see if this is, there's an ad. I never said stop sharing. I just said, that's not what I said, eh? It's not stop sharing. I wanted you to just go right. Because I want to ensure Right, so some of the information is in the slide. Oh yes, this is just kind of saying what I'm talking about. And the technological, we spoke about the technological, people have to be paying attention, especially marketers, to what is happening in terms of technology. Have to pay attention. And political forces, when we talk about political forces, we're not talking about PNP and JLP, but even the types of governments that exist around the world and the kinds of views that people have about certain things. All right, communism, some countries are communists and that will affect the way marketing is done in a country. If you're marketing in China, you have to be careful um, in terms of trying to, in, even in the movie itself, in trying to push democracy because the Chinese government shut it down. The same thing happens in Cuba. Cuba is not a, well, they say Cuba is communist, but I think it's more democratic. It's, it's more a kind of communist socialist country. I'm sure also too, even in Jamaica, you see that there are two kinds of forces in the country. One that is socialist or democratic socialist in nature coming from Michael Manley, as opposed to a kind of neoliberal kind of approach that believes in free market coming from the Siaga era. And cultural forces, people have different beliefs about certain things, all right? And even when it comes down to issues of sexuality, when it comes to cultural forces, some people say, hold on, I don't to push certain things, I don't put too much things in the movie, no, no, because I don't want to do this, I don't push the, the, the kind of isms and schism of homosexuality or whatever it is. Another thing too, in terms of cultural forces that to take into consideration 
or people's beliefs about certain things, people's norms, people's ways of living, if they consider certain things to be um, 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 religiously sensitive, if you're advertising in a Muslim country, you know, how, how are women portrayed in the ads, things like that. Because in some countries, women are not allowed to do certain things. So you have to take those things into consideration. And many international businesses, what they do know, they ensure when they're operating in any specific country, they employ senior managers who originate in that country just to be on the safe side in terms of their marketing campaigns. So demographic changes, this is just going to kind of explain some of what I was talking about. So changing age demographics of the Canadian population is both an opportunity and a threat. Do you think we have a changing, do you think our population is changing in Jamaica? We have any demographic changes, changing um, changes in Jamaica in terms of population growth? Well, sir, right now, they, you know, well, they don't even write, but the population seems as if it is decreasing because of COVID. No, oh, population not decreasing because of COVID. What people don't realize is that Jamaica is becoming an aging population. Contrary to popular belief, we, a lot of, um, we don't have a high level of births um, going on. So it, the, the, the country is aging, it's becoming an old, it's becoming an old um, an aging population because persons are living much longer lives. Contrary to popular belief, people look at the news and think the two little crime on, on TV is, the be all and end all of Jamaican, but the population itself is actually aging and it's actually a concern for policymakers because if your population is aging, it affects productivity. And this is why a, a countries like Canada now, they encourage people to come into the country because older persons will affect productivity. They can't work or they can't work for long. But there is a root problem. There is a root cause to that. Which is? Because because the same Canada believes in same-sex marriage and encourages these things, which lower the reduction, the reduc um, lower the, um, the reproduction of the country. So, yes, they, 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 that's why they have to um, ask other persons to come into the country because the same thing that should cause reproduction for, to have young persons, vibrant persons to work, they are killing it. Well, I, so, I, I, I will So there is a root, there is a root problem. All right. So I would say one, you need to do research because that's actually factually incorrect. So it's the aging population is not caused by homosexuality in Canada. All oh, right, so. I don't mean say that it is caused by that, but that, mm -hmm. that is uh, subconsciously. Those are what causes those things. Persons. All right. One, it can be that persons are not dying or maybe there is not a, 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 a increase in crime where persons persons are just killing persons. And but, we're happy for that. Yeah, but what I'm saying is that can be a cause of it as well. No, but I'm saying, you know, and what I'm saying to you that is that anything you say relating to that in an, in, a, in, an, in an environment like this, in an academic environment, must be based on fact, not on opinion or emotion. So I'm saying factually that is actually... That. Yes, yeah, so I'm saying factually that is not correct. Factually that is not correct. That is because of the existence of, because they, they encourage same-sex marriage, why they are having, that's partly why they have aging population. That's actually not correct. They have a high for, um, life expectancy. People live much longer lives in, um, in Canada. And this is partly why they have an aging population because persons are living much longer lives. And I'm saying to you too, that that is part they are becoming a problem even in Jamaica, that people are living much longer lives in Jamaica. And this is, and, and it's again, it is worrying. I think it was a PI, PSOJ, no, it would have been, uh, what they call himself again. It's not starting. The planning, um, PIOJ, the Planning Institute of Jamaica, that there is a study that was released that showed that Jamaica, um, Jamaicans are living much longer lives. The, so in a country like Jamaica, when we watch the news and we see people being killed here and there, we think that that is the be all and end all of what is happening in Jamaica. But if, it, if you understand crime, and I'm sure you guys do, because you're all, most of you are in law enforcement, police or, or social, you realize that crime is actually concentrated in specific areas. Inner city areas, that's where people are being killed. If we could stop 
inner city violence, we would be living even much longer lives. Um, we wouldn't have the high level of, 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 of homicides in Jamaica. Correct me if I'm wrong, um, persons who are in law enforcement. Talk to me, because I don't want to, to talk as if I know. I want to hear your perspective. Based on what I just said about crime in Jamaica and where it is concentrated. Well, sir, you can say, yes, in the inner city, you know, it is expected there. But outside of that, you have areas where crime, the crime rate in those areas um, are considered very high. Like where? Uh, in Clarendon. Clarendon is a war zone. That's a whole heap of get, get out of the city. <laughs> in a, <laughs> a whole okay. heap. So, yes. You know, so, you know so when, me, when me say Clarendon, I say, all right, a bush country place. You know? No, man. Like, I, I know what you mean. Like, I know what you mean. But they're still, let's say, they're yeah, still man, I know, cold, man, they country get out. West Milan and you have, you have crime rates there, you know, not just in the inner city because a whole heap of other things go on. Um, yeah. There. There. No, but I'm saying, I'm yeah. agreeing with you, you know, what I'm saying, hold on, what I'm saying, you know, you, you do have crime outside of inner city, you know, but I'm saying the high levels of crime, crimes that are committed in Jamaica are concentrated in what police call hotspots. Yes, Think about yes, it, how many, spot. hold on, no. Think about how many teachers are killed in Jamaica, how many doctors are killing, how many professionals are killed in Jamaica. You don't really hear a lot about that. You hear cases, yes, but it's not a lot. But when you hear about like five persons being shot or killed or four or three, those are usually some gang related inner city, whether the inner city is country or town in Mobe, where there's a lot of scamming or even other areas. When you hear about crimes in quote unquote middle class areas, it's usually um, like robbery or, you know, family kill family or they, they're targeting return residents or they target a businessman or two. But for the most part, crimes are really concentrated in inner city communities. And as I said, whether those inner city communities are in town, what we call town, town, or in the, in the urban areas, or in rural areas. Someone um, was about to speak. Go ahead. Someone had said, sir, go ahead for me. Is it that she forgot our thought? So you can bring, you can go back to the other slide. I'm going to go back to the other slide. I just wanted to know if somebody wanted to say something. All right, so in terms of demographic, um, um, the demographic environment, you have to look at um, the kinds of what I call population shifts. So we have baby boomers, we have generation X, we have millennials, and we also have generation Z. Anybody knows which, which year generation Z would start based on what we're seeing on the screen? So anybody born, you know, after 2000 is considered a part of that. I have some slides, you know. Right. So this is in Canada. This, was spec this is specific to Canada, that baby boomers, um, 9.8 million people. Then the generation um, X is 7 million and millennials 10.4 million. And then generations, yeah, I, I don't know the statistics. And this is specific to Canada. Uh, as I said, I, I studied marketing in Canada. So a lot of my, in terms of the demographic information will be based on that. And so if you are a marketer now, you need to decide now which demographic group am I, um, am I um, targeting? Who makes up a part of my segment? Am I targeting baby boomers? Am I targeting generation X? Am I targeting millennials? All right. Oh, yes. I just remember what the thing is. Okay. Is it there, there, no, there. I just want to make sure demographic, 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 no, it's not there. All right. So it's very important to bear that in mind in terms of demography. And these are just ads showing you examples of how they target like generation um, Xers, and millennials, I think my paper when I, that I did in Canada, um, we, I looked at millennials. And millennials are between the ages of, um, I'm a millennial because I was born in 83. Oh, Friday is, my, is actually my birthday. I'm collecting gifts, guys. If you have any gifts, you know, you can throw it my way. I'm 38 on, on, on Friday. Thank you when it comes there. I hope you enjoy your day to the fullest. Thank you. I'm trying to see if I can go to Florida, but uh, the tickets are ridiculously expensive. So I might end up on the North Coast. 
you know, trying to, 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 to <laughs> enjoy myself. Tomorrow. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Whose birthday is tomorrow? My so, birthday was last week. Happy belated birthday. <laughs> I think somebody said that their birthday is tomorrow. Okay. All right. Happy birthday when it comes. Yes, man. Only good people born these times, you know, you know, only good people we are. And so Sir, so <laughs> <laughs> was yesterday. Happy oh, belated goodness. birthday. Yes, yes, yes. Happy birthday. You're a Cancerian, right? Let's just check to see if you're a Cancerian. Yes, she is. <laughs> All right. We, we have to check. <laughs> yes, we have to check, you know, because only good Whose people. birthday was yesterday. Only good person, sir. <laughs> yes, yes. We are very I caring say, and I everything. Say, I say this, I say this day after this day. All right, now come up at school. Friday, I'm going to get one lollipop. All right, now, but that. Oh Lord. Yes, I, I, I'm getting I, I'm getting old. I can't believe it. You know, 38. I used to trouble my mother when she was in her 30s actually old, but no. Ah, yeah, I'm, I'm getting there. All right. So it's very important now, um, as this ad is showing you that you understand your market or the segment in the market and how best to target them. And and, and, and of course, also to, it will inform the kinds of advertisements and the kinds of platforms you're going to use to reach these particular groups of individuals. All right, they're just giving you some demographic information. I don't need to get, um, these are talking about demographic changes. Can you think of, well, I did say one thing in terms of demographic changes in Jamaica, in terms of um, becoming an aging population, but can you think of any other demographic changes um, that are happening uh, with the Jamaican population or in the Jamaican population? Sir, can I repeat the question, please? Can you think of any other demographic change or changes in relation to the Jamaican population? Takes in consideration technology. No, it wouldn't take in consideration. We are talking about the actual population. population. Yes. So we did say one is that the population is aging. And if you look at some of these examples, they're talking about um they're talking about so growing market of non-traditional households. Do we have that in Jamaica? Growing crowdedness syndrome, fewer families have children, more dual income families. So we have the we have. I think one of the things that we have in Jamaica is that women have become a, 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 an economic force. So they are described as the belly of the, of the Jamaican economy. So they have more disposable income, which would mean that they are also delaying when they start their families and how many kids they actually have. Yes. And, and sir, this is due to, I learned in the last semester, um, um, persons aren't that's why they want to um legalize abortion so that women have rights to when they have children and if they want to put let's say they want to put their education first mm -hmm. they can abort the child and continue with their education and have children later. so they right. have more control Right, they would have more control mm -hmm. over their bodies and their future. Mm -hmm. All right, mm -hmm. and of course, you know, abortion is a very debatable issue. I usually leave it alone. I say to people, men should leave that conversation because they can't get pregnant. Allow women to have the conversation because men don't get pregnant. Um, but that's a, that's a, that's and and uh, so those particular things are also affecting the kinds of demographic changes that are happening in Jamaica. Sure. Oh, yes, I think in China recently they increased the amount of child that. A couple can have. Right. They have increased the number of children a, a couple can have. So it has moved from two now to three. Why do you think that? Because them spread the COVID, kill out the old people, and then now they want. Conspiracy theory. <laughs> it's all <sound> like LA Lewis. <laughs> 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 but I think part of what they're concerned about is that they now realize that their population is decreasing. 
definitely. Yes, and their population is also, and partly because their population is aging. So an aging population, people aren't interested in, in, in families anymore. And even in Jamaica, you find that there, there are less marriages. People are not necessarily running to get married. Nobody's killing themselves to get married. Especially since divorce takes so long, you know, it's very difficult to get um, out of divorce or to get a divorce. So geographic shifts to in population. So you find that countries like Canada now are attracting, they're attracting professionals. You find that professionals are leaving Jamaica. The doctors, the nurses, especially my nursing students, the students I taught in nursing um, at Excelsior, a whole host of them are in England now. A whole host of them, about 10 of them are in England. And many of them, them say, sir, the moment you get that certificate, we're on the plane to, to England. They're heading out. So that too is affecting populations across the world. So if you're a marketer, how does that now inform what you do? Um, buying habits, you find um, one of the things that, one of the changing buying habits now of Jamaicans is that more Jamaicans are buying what? Online. Online. Mm -hmm. A lot of Jamaicans are buying online or are using cards. So I, for example, if you don't take, if you don't have a card machine, I, you're not going to get my money. Unless I must have physical cash, I don't have physical cash. I literally don't walk with physical cash. One, people beg too much. That is one. And two, I don't want to be, to become a victim of robbery. So if you come and rob, you know, nothing to get. The most you'll get is a thousand dollars. But, um, sir, I must, uh, um, point out to you that they are getting the criminals are upgrading yeah, because yeah. now they are asking you for your your um code your i your pin which pin and yes sir then let's i will give you a pin no, no i will sir, give you a no, pin carry it to sir. the machine you know sir they carry it to the machine and they yeah. have a gun at your head yeah, they and carry they are letting there. you know if them go in there and the, and the pin no work, you know, mm -hmm. live. Well, so you have to give them the right pin in order I agree. to it. Mm -hmm. I agree that that is happening. Uh, I agree that that is happening. This is why, while I'm in Jamaica, when I'm if I'm walking to the supermarket, I hide my my cards where I unless them into men, they would have to go very far to find it. Unless they're no, into. But sir, want to scam in. Some of them must set up all machine in the ATM for scan you. Your thing and then just um take off everything off of your card. Which is this is where now the banking um sector comes into play because what they have to pay attention to are a customer spending habit. For example, if I usually spend ten to fifteen thousand dollars in one week or whatever, if you see me spending fifty thousand, put a block on the card because it, it is outside of my usual scope. And also too, many banks will tell you that they will say to you, okay, Mr. Clark, just ensure that the, the, the rate or the amount that you can spend per day is $15,000. I remember when I wanted to increase mine, the bank was saying, do not do that. They were very adamant about it. And I said, you know what, let me just follow the bank. So if they, if they can get $15,000, I can get back $15,000. But they said, don't raise it to like 100000 or 50000 Because if in an instance where somebody takes you to the ATM and pulls a gun and puts a gun at your head, they will only get $15,000. God forbid. All right. Um, so, so those particular things to affect marketing and how marketers carry out their jobs. This too. Do you think that Jamaicans are becoming better educated? Sir, yes, sir. Not since COVID. Sir, a people can't afford for their school. Well, I, I don't know that people can't afford to go to school. I think yes, enough people can't afford for their school and pay a school fee. So even if um they want further their education, you know, certain little things might happen and them couldn't get for good school at the time or for further their education or fee reach mm -hmm. at a certain level you know because jobs they not make enough money them have too much responsibility mm -hmm. what about issue so a lot of people can't go to school for further than education well i agree with you but there are some persons too who are doing what they're doing they're doing shorter programs sir i disagree with Franklin because the government puts 
programs in place for students, for persons, adults, to go to school and they even get um pay while going to school. Mm -hmm. so, there are, there are far more programs now than when I was going to school. You have yes, K-13. How many people know about those programs? How they many know. People in no, the no, no, no. They know about it, but some of them, they don't want that because they think it takes too long. It's a, too, it's a longer route to success. I can tell you they know. A lot of them know, but they, some of them, they start the programs and they stop. Because oh, what, some of them, even when some of the bank, remember that some of the banks used to pay, they pay for POB, principles of business and accounts, and they had to stop because many of the students were not turning up for the exams. Because I'm telling them, say, oh, and my, and my, money, and my, and my money or my mother money pay for that. So me not going to do no exam. I can tell you. And, and so th those, many are programs. The, those are the ones, sir, where you no know, have no interest in education at all. I prefer that they self than life. Then don't care and just one way, mm -hmm. right? But you have you have people who really want to go to school and interest in their education to get a better education, and then just don't have the opportunity. Then just don't have the push or the drive or not like that. Well, I agree, but 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 in 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 the context of marketing. What percentage of those persons make up the marketplace? I don't know that there that's a large percentage. I, I find that the, the the more education you have, the more money you earn, the more expensive your life becomes. And you find that Jamaicans now are demanding better customer service and they are be demanding better products, they are demanding better service from institutions, expect, even the ones who are not educated they themselves are demanding certain things. They want better quality. They want better customer service. They want a variety. They want to have access to a variety of products because even the cart man downtown have him iPhone. He must push him cart and he have the latest iPhone because he have grandma or grandpa or him bridging or him cousin or sister or brother are foreign and if brother or sister are foreign, I send down the product. So even if they're not educated, you find that even the, the, the remittance plays a fundamental role in terms of consumer behavior. They want certain things. They want certain things to be, they want access to certain things. They don't want, they look at what we call bang a phone. Nobody don't want a bang a phone. All the five-year-old, five year old, six, they don't want a bang a phone. They want a late phone. Phones that are ridiculously expensive. The kinds of laptops that they want, ridiculously expensive. When they go to parties, the kinds of alcohol that they consume. This is why alcohol or, or alcoholic beverage beverages are positioned a particular way in the marketplace to attract especially young people. What are some of the drinks that they drink at the party? They want, well, I don't know. I go party, but they want certain types of drinks. Exactly, and these are ten thousand dollar bottle or five thousand dollar bottle drinks. And I don't buy them. Dollars. I don't buy them, and I can afford them. But I ain't buying that because I think no, it's ridiculous. No, but look, you see, when me answer, sir, you can't afford it, you know. You not nah, buy it. No. Nope. have some people who live above them means, and then people who are buy it on Sunday they have no dinner to eat. But exactly, exactly. Because them have to go to the party, go hype and show off, and buy the latest shoes and and and. and it. I do for me. I'm not mean, but I don't, I don't believe in wasting money that way. Why should I buy a Moscati or whatever they call it for $30,000? I can drink a green ice, which is $200, and I'm good. And, and, and I, have, I have always been this type of person. See, if I'm going to a party, I fool my belly from my yard because I don't mean, mean, spend no bag of money on no party. Yes, sir, that is me. I fool my belly first at my yard, then I go to the party. Because I always say nobody not gonna pay them rent or their mortgage out of me. That's just my thinking. I don't believe in, in that kind of squander. And in my for me, I have always said I don't need to prove anything to anybody. You know, people go to party and they offer proofs so that they have on the latest this or they can spend this. I don't need to prove anything to anybody. I always tell people, look at my car. Well, anyone else who live in Jamaica, I always ensure that I have a nice car. And, and of course, me not gonna dress pop down. Me not of course, I'm going to put myself together. But I was. Sir, you're not bra for man. That's it, no, but I'm, I just don't believe in those kinds of things, you know. And I yeah, think marketers first, are so very. I think I think marketers are very very um, skilled in that area in terms of what I call propping up people into believing that they must consume certain things, they must wear certain things in order to feel like them are somebody. If you look at it, sometimes people who actually have money sometimes they don't do those things. They have money. Look on some of the what are our Asian brothers and sisters. Sometimes the shoes that they have on dirty, they all the, the, the motor lift off. They and they're very perfectly fine going home they're in their Mercedes Benz. Slippers and not shoes, slippers. Exactly. 
even in Canada, sometimes I go to clubs. White people, they're in their slippers at the club and we have to dress up and kill ourselves and we have to look this way. And they have money and we don't. They have wealth and we don't. Anyways, so increasing diversity, that's another thing. And this is more outside of um, Jamaica than in Jamaica. Large and growing visible minority market. In other words, if you have, anybody have Netflix? Oh, no, I have Netflix. Let me see yes, if you know. Yes, All right. Yes, well, a phone account only depends on somebody's account. <laughs> and you find that if you if you pay attention to even Netflix, they are now going after minority markets. You see that they'll tell you like black leads. You see all these black movies because, and if you look at even um Oprah Winfrey's network, she goes after a specific segment in the market, black women. She's very, very smart because some people, you know, they try to go after everybody in the marketplace. Own says, okay, I don't want everybody. I just want African-American women because, you know, African-American men, we kind of, black men, we, know we, we are not the spenders. Women most times spend money. Even sometimes, even if we want the underpants, we are going to give the girlfriend or the wife the money to buy the underpants. We don't necessarily go and buy. We will buy our shoes because, you know, the shoes have to kind of fit the look and all of that. But most of the time, sometimes we are not the actual ones spending money. Man, mean when it come out to spending money. And the men who are in the, I, I, I would love for you guys to, see, to say if I'm, I, if I, what I'm saying is factually so, that women are more spenders and men kind of, we kind of miser with the money. I don't know if it's because we have wives and girlfriends and concubines. So we have to think about everybody. Um, why we don't really spend. You're, you're almost telling you, sir. <laughs> no, no, no. I said we, meaning that the collective. <laughs> <laughs> not personal sir. uh what what you say um fabian what am i correct i can't make out fabian's name but the other men are not sure yeah, wait, if... wait, wait, wait. Them attack you for a long time but am i correct fabian what do you think is it is, do you think that men are um based on what i said about men what what are what's your take on that men as consumers <laughs> general. Yes, generally, of course, it's general. In general, I would agree with you to some point. Mm -hmm. Yes, you know, men who we, we really don't. And, and Fabian, and, you mean? No, no, no. Huh? We're not saying that Fabian, remember, no, we can't get personal. <laughs> no, you know, we're just saying generally. Wow. Is that men don't nest and mean in this case doesn't mean that you mean you don't want to give away your money. It's just some fact that you don't just get up and spend. Sir, you guys like don't have you don't know, understand how to spend money really. Like well, I know how to spend my money. <laughs> I don't know about anybody. Else. <laughs> men <laughs> don't but, sir, <laughs> you know, but, sir, some both of yes. I don't send my husband to the supermarket, just to go to the supermarket and check up things and just bring back. So you waste money. So I and yes, I tell him to right. just talk <laughs> things and just move. And I am so no, so I don't things about want. Think about the walking. And that me that thing Thursday. You guys, <laughs> if you go to the supermarket, you don't know what you want. Or uh, if the wife go to the supermarket with the husband, so you never did know what you want. They don't like to spend time. They don't like to and, walk. Uh, uh, no, I don't, don't like, like to walk. I, I, I mean, agree. No, no them just don't take... like to shop with women. Over. Women all. take too long. They have to try on every single thing price. in the store. They try, and then they have to go to another store to compare. Yeah. I remember when I was a boy and I went to the market with my mother. End up buying nothing or most or less. Exactly. I went to the market with my mother when I was a boy and I said, never again. And I've never been back to the market. When she said, you want to come? Nope. No, I don't want to come because I'm going to walk up and down. And plus, when I want something to drink, you're going to tell me, say, you're so rich, you're going to cook and feed me. And I said, hell no. And it's true that men don't necessarily... Because when I'm going to buy some, I don't have any time to walk up and down. I can't bother. I have no interest in walking up and down. If me see the pants, me see the shoes, me see the shirt, and me like it, me go buy it. Usually what I do, I have two ways of how I buy. I, the first round, I don't buy. I just walk and look. Like a week before or so. And then the, then the following day or the following week, I just go and buy. My problem, my personal problem is that when I'm buying, I buy too much. So if I'm buying a shoes, I don't like buying one pair of shoes because I think that, you know, sometimes you buy one and you put on the suit and you think it's going to look good, but when you actually put it on, it doesn't look the way you want it to look. So I usually like to have options. So I'll buy like two or three pairs of shoes and then buy three pants and three shirts. And I say, okay, all right, I kind of fix it up and, you know, 
but it is it's, it is very true that as men we don't necessarily want to walk up and down what some advertisers have been doing um there's i don't remember which ad it is i, I should find it and show you what some advertisers do or what some marketers do now in order to get men to spend you know who they target they target women so they say to women do you want your man to smell like this and of course she's going to say yes so if the man is not going to buy it, she's going to buy it and say to him, hello, brother, try put, make sure you spray on this before we go to the door. You know? So that is what is happening. Um, we also have growth in recognized disabilities. So the, 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 the quote unquote disability community now is also spending. Um, and of course, I would consider them to be a niche market. So it depends on what you're offering them. You can get a lot of spending out of them. Or if you're going after disability, um, um, segment in the market you can go after you can target the ngo non-governmental organization that represent them because sometimes you might need the ngos endorsement before they will make a pur purchase and then of course the acceptance and this is in canada the acceptance of lgbt and gay marriages um, and the general gay community and how they come now as a, as a particular segment now there's a mr mccarty my principal was telling me about the, 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 there's a particular car that came out that they wanted to put out in the marketplace. And when they looked at the market, they said, no man, the market too saturated. They were, they were not able to position the car for, you know, like men, women, professional, or whatever. And they said, okay, who are we going to go after? And the company itself, this was in Europe, it decided to go after the gay community. And it was when the gay community started buying the cars and it became very fashionable, then everybody started buying the car. I need to ask Mr. McCarthy of that example. So I know that this is something that is that is not recognized or considered in Jamaica, but outside of Jamaica in countries like North America and Europe, there are marketers who target these particular persons um, for them to buy certain products. Um, economic environment, very, very important. Whether they live in an industrial community, subsistence, which means like farming or whatever, and developing like Caribbean. Um, so nations vary greatly in terms of their levels and distribution of income. So it affects income in terms of can the persons afford what you are offering the marketplace. Very, very important. My, a good friend of mine, um, Dr. Borland, set up a, years ago, set up a medical office in St. Thomas and had to close it down because St. Thomas is one of the poorest, poorest parishes um, in Jamaica. So the persons could not afford to, um, or could not, could not afford his services. So he had to close shop. So it's very, very important to understand that. And this is to tap Brazil's large and fast growing middle class, former JetBlue founder, David Neilman, shown here, started low fear. Anybody has ever traveled on JetBlue? Oh, first of all, you know, go foreign, me know if you know go foreign, me ask you if you travel on JetBlue. You know, you go foreign, me know if you know go foreign. Anybody ever go foreign? What we call foreign. Yeah, this, uh, never traveled on JetBlue. Never traveled yes, on JetBlue? I've which is the cheap, no, for sir. Yeah. What are the which is the cheapest airline? Is it is it JetBlue that they normally? It's not JetBlue. What's the other one called? The cheap airline. Um, Spirit. Spirit, right? So like a Spirit, yes. no Spirit caters a certain what I would call a certain a certain segment in the marketplace. I don't like Spirit. Spirit. I think I've traveled two times on Spirit. It's like being on a country bus going to going to a parish in Jamaica. So I said, you know what? No more spirit. <laughs> it was like, it was you very, very... Feel the spirit. Yeah, exactly. You feel the spirit on a plane like that. So, of course, disposable income <laughs> does affect um, your marketing and how you position your product or, and or service in the marketplace. Factors that are, can affect spending, changes in income, you know, it means that consumption pattern will change. Economic crisis might happen, um, and the pandemic is an example that might can cause uh, an economic crisis. Changes in spending patterns. Consumers at different income levels have different spending patterns. So depending on who you're going after in the marketplace, if it's a high-end product, of course, you can't target lower class people because they have no money. You have to go for other persons who are quote unquote high rollers. Oh yes, this no, I think I have this natural environment. This one, no, and I want to play, oh no, not yet. This one, no, is very, very critical. And it part, forms a part of what is called sustainable marketing. Where is my goddamn um, video? I had the link, where is it? No, where's my link? 
No man, there's a link. Hold on. I saved it. Hold on, guys, because I want to show you this. This is my big pet peeve. Um, sustainable marketing. And you find a lot of companies are now paying attention. Let me see if I I saved the link. I'm sure I did. Uh, okay. Why is it not there? Why? I'm not seeing it. All right, hold on, guys. Because this part is very, very important. This one is very important. Um, sustainable marketing. I actually had an example. No, that's not right. Here's the video. Okay, all right. All right, so I'm going to share a video with you that speaks to the whole notion of sustainable marketing and how marketers now are paying attention to sustainable marketing and they're actually branding their packaging their As products a particular way like eggs like all right walk into any grocery store and you're bound to see it green marketing it seems to be almost everywhere these days our eggs are all natural and our shampoos are encased in green labels adorned with leaves and generic trees in many respects, this push towards an eco-friendlier consumerism is a positive change. Organic produce and sustainably made clothing are needed if we are to reduce industrial and personal footprints. But unfortunately, hidden among these ethically and environmentally driven products lies an insidious form of advertising, greenwashing. From bath products to meat packaging, greenwashing occurs in almost every sector of the consumer market. But today, let's take a close look at how Fiji Water uses ad campaigns to construct a green image around its otherwise environmentally detrimental company. But first, why exactly is greenwashing bad? Quite simply, it plays into a consumer's desire to live a green life without necessarily creating a sustainable product. And on a deeper level, one of the greenest things to do is to buy fewer things. So no matter how great the product is, it's probably still kind of deceptive to market it as green. So greenwashing means using titles like all natural or eco-friendly or simply using a green background in order to entice a customer into buying a product that is by no means environmentally friendly. In some cases, bigger companies that falsely label their products as eco-friendly, like eggs labeled farm fresh or all natural, can often outcompete smaller companies who are more environmentally grounded and actually employ ethical practices while creating their product. Fiji Water's recent marketing campaign encapsulates the essence of this greenwashing. Fiji Water is a gift from nature to us. To repay our gift of leaving it completely alone, bottled at the source, untouched by man, it's Earth's finest water. While aesthetically pleasing and pleasant to watch, there are a number of aspects that work hard to shroud Fiji Water's large environmental footprint in a cloud of green. For one, the bright double exposures of nature flickering within the edges of the bottle immediately cue us to Fiji Water's connection to nature. Especially when contrasted with the dark cityscape background, the water bottle appears to be a perfect image of a world quote-unquote untouched by man. The visuals are then compounded with the narration of a young girl who anchors the ad with this proclamation. Bottled at the source, untouched by man. Clearly, this ad works hard to paint Fiji water as a part of nature, rather than what it really is. Water, bottled in plastics that take many years to degrade, shipped via intensive transportation from Fiji to destinations around the world. Both these practices wreak havoc on the environment, polluting the air and the water. And to bring Fiji's negative impact into sharp relief, 47% of people who live in Fiji don't have access to clean, safe drinking water, according to the World Health Organization. This commercial is just a small part of Fiji's larger campaign that attempts to reimagine the bottled water company as the essence of nature. Spreads like this reveal the larger work at play in Fiji's greenwashed marketing tactics. They are pursuing environmentally minded customers by framing their water bottles as a completely green product. Fiji tells us a one-sided story that appeals to their customers' moral conscience. 
You can't help but choose Fiji over other bottled waters because they frame purchasing a Fiji bottle as a way to reduce carbon emissions and save the Fijian rainforest, when in fact their product is inextricably tied to the systems of pollution that are causing carbon emissions and deforestation. Greenwashing comes in many forms, and it's not often as clear-cut as with Fiji water. So understanding how and why greenwashing works is essential to spotting it. A critical deconstruction of a cleaning product is necessary if you're buying it solely because it's green. Oftentimes, nature and trees are used to create the impression of an eco-friendly product when there is really no substance to back up those claims. So do some research and shop with intention because the collective power of consumers can steer companies towards more truthful and ethical products. All right, so talk to me in terms of what is called ethical marketing or sustainable marketing in relation to what was just presented about Fiji water. Uh, are you guys hearing me? Uh, hello? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We hear you. Yeah. Is it that you don't understand the question, or do I need to replay the video or something? Sir, ask about the question. So I'm saying, what was the, what's really, what is the story of the Fiji water that is being told here and um, within the context of marketing? So they're using the environment, as in the green forest um, environment, to sell the water, which they're saying that um, it comes from natural um, resources. However, their bottles, it takes over 450 years to be decomposed. Um, they, don't, they themselves don't have clean drinking water. That's what I can tell me. Mm -hmm. And sir, it's not ethical because as as a market uh, as um a marketer or whatever, it's not ethical to do that because they are saying that the place Fiji does not have proper water and uh, all of that, and 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 they're giving an impression as if um that water they are all about eco. Uh, they are all about green life and all of that. When the bottle is not an eco-friendly bottle, right? So mm. what we have to, what we're bearing in mind now is that another consideration that affects marketing and marketing activity is concerns about the environment. So one concern was demographic. One another concern is economic, but of course the natural environment. So natural resources used to produce goods, shortage of raw materials, increase pollution, increase government intervention, strategic decisions around creating environmentally sustainable products. And this is why you find some, um, you will find um, some companies will actually brand their product a particular way to say that it's eco-friendly or they have used recyclable, uh, recyclable plastic bag or whatever it is. It's a very, very big, and a big trend now in marketing. It's a very, very big trend. Technological environment. Yes, go ahead. Somebody was saying something. They can. Yes, you can. A, a, a consumer can sue. A consumer can sue. And even a, 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 a local company that is like a, that is a regulatory and uh, that is a regulator can sue to say that it's false advertising. You can be sued for those kinds of stuff. Um, for what? The, the, the we're selling, I think it was tuna, but it wasn't tuna or something like that. Right. Those there are those things there, you can't be deceptive. You cannot be deceptive. And even the same thing with about subscription. If I subscribe to your company to get information about shoes, you're not supposed to be sending information about tomatoes. I only subscribe to get information about shoes, not tomatoes. Well, sir. 
Oh, nobody in a Sioux Burger King and KFC. When they advertise because we are not in a we are not a Sioux culture. That's the problem. I know, I know. Because you see, oh, them bring up the burger like it's big, mm -hmm. and the chicken them like it's big. When you go, when you're going down a street, go. Exactly. We are not a Sioux culture. We are people who fight and shoot people when we to solve our problems. We are very violent. We don't resolve our problems in courts. In, a, in more advanced countries, you go to the courts to resolve your issues. We not do that. We have a trace and fight and fling buckle and stone and who forget shot and chop and all kinds of stuff. That's how we resolve our issues. And sometimes you go to the police, they want to resolve the issue, but the police hands are tied. They'll say to you, boy, I can't do anything because, you know, she never touched you. She just says something or him never touch him, just say something. And you say to the police, but hold on. So when he ch him chop me now, that's when you're going to do something. And the police says, yes, because that's what the law, the law doesn't allow me to charge. Sometimes a person is just making a threat or something like that. All right. So, so technology which police give that information, they, sir? There are many times police tell you that somebody, a man is no, harassing. Sir, a no, sir. They don't mm -hmm. mm -hmm. They don't what? They send it to the court. If they can't deal with it, they send it to the court. Which court? Yeah, they can either send it to the civil court or you can go to the offer tree court to take out church summons and stuff like those. Mm. Yeah, but I'm saying, I, and I'm saying to you that Jamaica is not that kind of society. We don't want, we want instantaneous resolution to our problems. We're not going to go down a station, go wait for you no know, summons. And we are not that kind of culture. Culturally, we are not like that type of people. We don't really sue. It's very, it's really high. It's really, quote unquote, middle and upper class people who really sue. You don't hear ordinary Jamaican. Oh, we'll say we're going to sue, but we can't bother with the process because we've got to pay the lawyer. And we can't bother to pay the lawyer because we're not sure if we're going to win the case and all kinds of stuff. All right, so also to another techn technological thing that we need to take into consideration as marketers and that affects the marketing environment is technology. It's constantly changing. Sometimes it creates opportunities for some brands. Sometimes it creates threat for some brands. Sometimes it creates um, weaknesses for some brands. It can increase obsolescence. In, in, in other words, the market becomes inundated with a particular product. And this is why some brands, they go after niche. Um, they go after... Um, niche markets increase abstinence meaning that sometimes it makes certain things outdated how people for example consume music it can accelerate um, customer needs because your brand or your product or your service is now being flung across digital sphere all over the world it can result in constant um, evolving regulations because governments now have to be paying attention to regulating social media and if you realize countries around the world almost no country around the world has any kind of regulation for social media they have things like the cybercrime act for persons who um slander you on social media and you have a whole range whole holy for that and again in jamaica no it's uh, some people can't be bothered with the long drawn out thing i saw a case for example where a young man was at jamaica national and according to him he was not being attended to by the customer service rep. And he turned on his phone, went on Facebook live, and he was recording her. And people were making all kinds of comments. You people can guide me. Can't, she never one case to sue him because to me, that's slander. He doesn't know. Suppose she is given specific instructions about what she can and cannot do. So he's saying that she's not attending to his needs. But it could be that she's not, she's not in authority to actually address his needs. Um, can you guide me, people? Me want to know. Yeah, definitely. Um, she can sue him. Because to me, that's slander. Even yeah, people who just like go around and just record people and put it up on social media. Right, there's a thing with that, you know, you cannot record somebody and they are not aware of it. You have to let them be aware. Right. Right. This is why sometimes I don't go to, like, I like well, I'll say this. This is a side of me you might not know. I like to go to dance. I love to see the dash out and the ex I love to see it. I like to see it, you know, in its magnificence. And sometimes I'll participate. But I always say to people, do not record me. With the nature of my job, I cannot be seen in the public domain doing certain things. So most of the times I go to these parties, I just stand up and look. I don't do anything. When I'm overseas now, I'll do it. I'll, you know, enjoy myself because those people don't give a rat's behind. But in Jamaica, the moment you go to a little dance or whatever, everybody wants to record you. And sometimes you just prefer for the moment to be private. 
All right, so technological advances, we have to be paying attention to it as marketers. The political environment and political environment, as I said, doesn't mean JLP, PNP, but the kinds of regulatory trends that can affect how businesses operate within a country, the kinds of laws that protect customers as opposed to consumers, as opposed to interest groups, and the increased emphasis on ethics and social um, responsible behavior. A lot of that is now um, affecting co um, consumers. <coughs> and I'm sure you have, you have even seen even some of the debates about systemic racism in America with the whole Colin Kaepernick and um, signing to Nike and all kinds of stuff and how those things are being played out in terms of consumer behavior. Um, some conservatives, the white conservatives said, we're not going to buy it Nike, but Nike actually sold out the next two days, they sold out. They never had hands because the number of black people that went in the stores and bought their product. So the, you have to bear in mind too the political environment, especially if it is a multinational corporation or an international business. Very, very critical for them to be very, uh, to be mindful of the political environment in which they are operating. And I think I did mention to you the notion of, I, I'm not sure if it's this class or the international business class about China Harbor and the debate between the government and the opposition about giving the quote unquote, giving the contract to China Harbor for the, I think it's a Montego Bay leg of the highway. Does anybody, um, did you hear any story about that? Any news report about that? No, sir. Yes, I think so. All right, let me find the article. You guys you need to pay attention to these things. Uh, let me find the article. It's actually a, a good example of the political um, environment that can have influence on marketing. So government. Sorry, you're talking the leg that will be going through Manchester. I think it's I think it's more Mobi accused by opposition of giving contract to Chinese. I actually read it in my other class. I found the article. No, in Jamaica, Jamaican government. Let me type in the word Jamaica. My my computer is still reading Canada. Jamaican government. All right. It to Chinese says no, that's old. I think this is the one. Right, here it is. But this is not what I want. But what it was really saying is that the, the, the opposition was accusing the, the, the government of really bypassing the regulation, of um, bypassing the regulation by just awarding the contract to China Harbor. So those things to affect um what you do in the what you do in terms of uh, 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 in terms of marketing why is this thing not okay all right uh so the regulations so now you'd have to have a bid or something like that right? yes there's a bidding but the, the, the argument of the government is that one the nature of the of the project was um the the local um companies were not, they don't have that kind of capital. And two, I think the government really never want to give any look because you know, local people, you know, these local contractors, they are going to, they're going to be cost overrun. They're going to do all kinds of madness. And if work, them food. Exactly. Them and if, food. if the product is supposed to finish in two weeks or two months because they want more money. So I think that that's partly why the government and the government has legal standing to do it because I was listening to another discussion by I think Emily Crooks and she was talking about talking about it that the government has legal standing in in that regard so it's not as if they ignored the law and did that. Um, okay, so sir, can but... go back to the last slide, please, before you move on. Yeah, this one, okay. yeah, thanks. sir. Yes. And surprising, surprisingly, um, when they when. The locals work for the Chinese, they work very hard, you know. Yes, it, it, but when it, but but when a black man when a black man gets the contract and they are working, they don't work as fast as possible. But when they work for the Chinese, they work very hard. Yes, and they, they do. don't get good pay. So why is it why we stay like that? You know, I understand well, I, as I said, we we we're culturally different. We're culturally different. 
Very, very much different. Sir, them love the slave driver thing. True, and we, we, we tend to, we tend to, even in Jamaicans tend to float Jamaican laws, but when they go overseas, they, 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 they abide by the rules and regulation. And they'll say to people, me now wearing a mask, I mean, all of this, but make them go to the, the US embassy. They comply with everything. If them tell them to strip naked up, they then strip naked. But make yeah, the, the ordinary Jamaican laws, exactly. But the laws in Jamaica, they just float it. They don't care. They don't, even when you're going on a flight, when they're going to, to overseas, you know, they, they tend to be very polite. And you see, the moment they land in Jamaica, they start to use coarse words and they start to behave a particular way. And then tell us, then they're in yards, so I leave them alone. They can do what they want. And I'm like, oh my God. All right, so cause related marketing. Sure. Yes. There's no uh, people. Everybody, most people in Jamaica just take the vaccine. The US ever say we have to take it for God and country. Everybody take it. Everybody, yes, everybody man. Take the yes, then we don't take it fast, fast. Uh, well, I've got my second um my second dose because I know that Canada is gonna come with this foolishness about quarantine and all kind of madness. And I have no money to give Doug Ford and his, 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 his friends any money. All right, cause-related marketing. This is another thing too. And you find a lot of companies are doing it. Companies linking themselves with worth, worthwhile causes. Can you think of any cause-related marketing, um, any recent cause-related marketing in Jamaica? So what was the question? Can you think of any um, local example of cause related marketing? I love eyewear. What did they do? So when you go, you they give you free um, testing. When you go where? Where do you go? When you go in store to, to purchase the glasses, also they'll give you free eye testing. But that's not really cause related marketing, though. That's just adding value to the customer. Sir, I'm talking about. Uh, Payless. They? Payless. What did Payless do? Sir, uh, when you buy one. Shoes you get off price on the other one. That's not cause related marketing. Um, sir, can I try? Scotia. Uh, I think Scotia did one with the credit card for each payment. They, I think, plant a tree, something in that regard. Yes, yeah, so that's, yeah. a, that's, a, that's yeah. a very good example. Can you think of any other one? Or, sir, if they take donations, sometimes you go into certain supermarkets and you see they have something like, what's the name of the place again? Um, it's a non-profitable organization. It started with S. I remember, but they have something there, like they have. If you buy this, you get you, you can you, like donation will go to that particular place to help children or something. Right. So that's another example, <laughs> and and even companies have sections of their 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 they have sections of their company that is dedicated to that digital Donate, foundation yeah. so you have digital Donate, foundation yeah. and that's they do egg they do um, cause related marketing yes go ahead someone said sir um as you talk yes i've been trying to put one in from you asked the question. Um, as you said, Digicel Flow has one where they they have a program set up for the kids them. So what they want, they want the kids them to, the parents to use the Flow service so that they can give them, uh, it, I wouldn't say it's free, but it's, I don't remember the name of what they give them so that they can do their online classes. Mm -hmm. So it, the amount of megabytes that are used when they're using their Zoom classes, um, they have it in, within their package to, or should I say, to grab the parents to take that package so that they it better for them, especially if they have kids at home who are using the online classes. Mm -hmm. They started um, 
when the COVID-19 came in and persons has to go online to for classes. Mm -hmm. so that's yeah, that, yeah, that's an, that's another good one. And you find too, whenever there's any kind of tragedy, like a, somebody, um, like a house burns down or persons come on TV and they're homeless or they're hungry or something, you find that, you know, you see brands, companies running all over the place trying to get on camera to say that we're donating $10,000 or we're giving them 10 bags or whatever it is. Um, even mm -hmm. Bounty Killer, even Bounty Killer, no, in a, in, when he was kind of rebranding and, and, and kind of reworking and re-engineering his image, he, you know, donated this to the hosp Kingston Public Hospital, donated this mm -hmm. to that and that and that as, a, as a, a way of repairing his image. And it is a part of cause-related marketing. It's a big, big thing now in marketing. The cultural mm -hmm. environment, very important. So standard acceptable belief system that affects a society's um, basic values. It's just, cultural means the, the, the things that can't people hold dear in a country. Anything that people hold dear. So it could be that their norms, their belief systems, the way that they eat, the way that they walk, the way that they dress. Um, they, 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 they find certain things offensive. Um, and, I, and I give you a radical example. I'm not sure. Do you remember when the US embassy um, had the, the, the LGBT flag in Jamaica and it was a big problem with the government. I think this was prior to the election and the government was like, you, you should not fly that flag yes. in Jamaica because yes. it goes against the quote unquote, this cultural sentiments of the country. It was a big issue in Jamaica. Yes, I remember that, I remember it. Right, right. Um, so, so, so in other words, brands, um companies marketers have to be very mindful of the environment in which you operate for example in jamaica you are going to do certain promotions you know that a large block of jamaicans consider themselves to be christians whether they are practicing christians are just christians on paper or in theory so certain things they don't expect you to promote because they'll become offended by certain things also, too, there are some brands that are local, and when they go international, they know that they have to be very mindful of the culture that exists elsewhere. Because um, if you want, if you want to, if you if you're selling a product or a service to people, then of course they must um, see themselves in it. And this is why you find even international organizations, when they're operating in other countries, they have to employ locals. Think about Chinese restaurants in Jamaica. Chinese restaurants, they make sure them are black people are cook. Cause there's a belief that they, they, they will cook dog and give us. Yeah. And so sir, not only with, with, with companies, but with with artists when they want to go mainstream and they mm -hmm. want to go international, they, they don't sing certain lyrics. Right. Like yeah. like Beanie Man did a song years back. He apologized for that. Also, popcorn, if you notice. They don't, the newer um, generation of music, they don't sing much about um, gays and whatever, whatever. Mm -hmm. They just keep it not. Like if they even do one look or something, they style it in, but they don't focus on those songs anymore because mm -hmm. they want to go mainstream. mainstream. Right. right. And they two are brands, you know, they are, they are brands in and of themselves. Is that, in other words, they are the product. And as a result, they have to be very mindful of the international environment in which they operate. Very, very mindful of that, even in when they go to other countries, outside of the issue of sexuality, but even in terms of how they treat women in other parts of the world. So in Jamaica, you know, they may grab, grab a woman and wind up on her. In some, you can't do that. Women are revered. In certain Muslim countries, you, you try that and they might kill you there because you're not supposed to do certain things. <laughs> Something as simple, I remember <laughs> in, where I work in Canada, uh, my, uh, my, my good friend, Mahir, she's Muslim. So one time she was away from work and I didn't see her so long. You know, normally we eat lunch together and she came back to work and I, and I said, what's up Mahir? And I was running to hug her and I saw her change, her, her, her countenance change. I was like, what am I doing wrong? And my boss was there and he was laughing and I was like, oh shoot. <laughs> I said, oh, you are not allowed to hug men. In other words, she's not supposed to hug a man who is not her husband. It's a different kind of culture. I have to be very mindful. Even the simple words you say to them are certain you know, gesticulations or facial expressions. You have to be very mindful. And I mean, generally, no, you have to be very mindful. So it's the same kind of sensitivity that will affect marketing and how marketing takes place in different um, environments. 
Um, I think Oreo failed in China. I remember when I was studying, Oreo failed in China because the same taste that exists in America, they thought the Chinese would, act, would have accepted that taste, not realizing that the taste, let's say the taste buds of Chinese are totally different. So it means that the product itself would, you know, you have to change probably the ingredients or whatever, however you make it, because they don't, they have a different taste. Yeah, it costs related yeah, market. Like Say that again, sir. Yeah. Hey. So be careful. So be careful now of stereotypes. We don't want to be perpetuating stereotypes of Chinese eating bats and dogs and stuff. I don't know it to be true. If they eat dogs, I hear it. I don't know if it, it's just, and as, a, as an educator, I don't want to perpetuate any stereotype right. about our Chinese <laughs> brothers and sisters. I don't know it to be true. And I don't know, I, I don't know that Chinese in Jamaica that actually eat dogs. Okay. But, but, all right. So somebody told you that. I don't know if it is true, but if they eat dog, it's, you know, it's, it's their, it's their, it's their thing. All right. So society's major cultural views are expressing people's views of themselves, um, in others, organizations, society, nature, and the universe. And of course, this is why sometimes they use celebrities to advertise products because they know that like a LeBron James, is very popular among African Americans or among Black people the world over. So they're going to put on one of their shoes on his um, on his uh, on his feet and and, and market to us. Are you saying Bolt? You know, I don't know that people actually go and buy um, Puma, but there's a Usain Bolt thing. So because they understand the cultural permutations. All right. Um, responding to the marketing environment. My thing is that as a marketer, and I try to do this as somebody who supervises marketing at the college, is to be proactive. You have to be looking ahead, paying attention to the market and ensure that you're keeping abreast and sometimes seizing opportunities that exist in the future. So examples of proactive responses, hiring lobbies. I don't know about the lobbies. Um, I don't do this. I don't do these things, um, initiating lawsuits and all that. I think it's lawsuits can be sometimes damaging to a brand. What I do, I usually engage my competitors. So because I'm in education, I engage them as a student. So I sign up for their programs to see the process, the customer, the, the, the customer journey. You know what forms are given, what type of information they give out, um, the courses that are being offered, the kinds of added value that they, 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 that is included in the package. And I say, okay, this is what UCC is doing, or this is what UA is doing, or this is what Portmore Community College is doing. How can I beat them at this? And sometimes I go to my principal and I say, Mr. McCarthy, you know that UCC is doing this. How can we beat them? And even for the K-13 students, we, we beat them in the K-13 students because they were they promoted it as a, as a two-year scholarship but did not inform the market that there were other costs involved. And we outsmarted them in that. They were far more aggressive in the marketplace, but we outbid them in that. So I don't really do these things. Forming agreements is good, but this notion of hiring lobbies, I would more hire like, um, I, don't, I don't know that I would use the word lobbies. And I think lobbies is in a North American context where you have persons who can influence like parliament to pass certain legislation or influence their, their political bodies to, form, to pass certain regulations. Um, but we don't really have that in Jamaica. I think influencers are good uh, as well as popular figures, um, you know, like a Usain Bolt or whatever. I think also to doing it by way of cause related marketing might be a good thing. Jamaicans might say, you know, you know, Digicel is not so bad or um, JPS is not so bad. Well, I don't know that they'll ever change your views of JPS, but I think um, certain brands, they do these kinds of things to change the views of other people. All right. Um, reviewing concepts. No, I want you guys know to, are you, have you registered on, you guys have access to Moodle, right? Sir, for my Moodle, the courses are not uploaded as yet. I'm no man, on wait, wait, what? Um, on Moodle, I'm the on Moodle, the thing is there. Yes, sir, they are there. So from mine is not there. Have you registered? It could be that you have yes, registered. Sir. Register, pay all of my school fee, everything, and it's not there. Clearance, and it's not there. Okay, all right. I want you guys to do. All right, let's do the quiz in the other class. It's a, let's do the quiz in the other class, all right? 
Um, let's do a quick overview. What are some of the things we covered today? The Responding angel to the market environment. <laughs> yes. So we're talking about, um, we're looking at the marketing environment and the, the factors that influence influence it, right? And what are some of the, 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 inf the factors that influence the marketing environment? Running advert advertisement. No, that's not one of the factors. Um, suppliers. So one of the factors we said was what? Not suppliers. The broad Sorry, factors. The we broad said. What are some of the broad factors? We, we said. Competitors. Men so those are the two the, the two categories are micro and macro. What are some of the macro factors and what are some of the micro factors? Micro factors are micro factors. resellers. No, micro micro mm -hmm. factors are um, that affects the marketing. That affects the market. That um sir sir the company the company yes the, the suppliers yes Marketing um, in terms um of competitors uh-huh customers we said customers we said publics yes and marketing intermediaries, intermediaries. yeah yes. mm -hmm. what are some of the macro factors now Demographic force. The demographic forces. Demographic, economic forces. Economic. Forces, yes, natural. Forces, political, political forces, cultural. cultural forces. There you go. Perfect. All right, everybody. Have a good evening. I'm starving. Okay. All right. Sir, Yes, somebody said, sir. Yeah, the PowerPoint, you didn't send it to us. No man, all these are available on uh, Moodle. You're <laughs> no. not going to get my PowerPoint. No, you're not getting my PowerPoint. You're going to get using PowerPoint that is on Moodle. But sir, lie, you lie, sir. Yes. <laughs> and, and, and you saw that I'm sharing the recording, right? So you are able, you have access to the recording for you to review. Sir, you, where are you send the recording? I shared it in the WhatsApp group. In the WhatsApp group. Okay. Yes. Oh, yeah. Remember, you had asked us to give it a couple of minutes due to YouTube betting it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, man, it's up a long time. Sir? Yes? You said we're going to get a quiz on Monday. It's during class time or on unit one. Um, during, um, it's going to be after class time. After class time. Okay. Yeah. Unit one. Unit one. Mm -hmm. All right, bye everybody. I'm actually mm -hmm. I start. I'm so hungry. Just start eat yeah, we are real. They are hungry. <laughs> All right, bye. Bye everybody. You're there. <laughs>